my hands are big. All I can say, how oh, great thou art. Thou art certainly an amazing God. We bless your name. We praise you. We thank you. We thank you for the life of our dear brother Reynolds. He has lived a good life and has been a blessing to so many people. Oh God, we pray that person shall make their family. And you continue to be with them, continue to bless them. We pray that you will prosper them. As we lay to rest, we pray that you continue to help them that they will also walk in his footsteps. We pray that you continue to be with his foundation as we wait upon you. Father, we just want to thank you that you are the giver of life. You are responsible for all that we do. We pray that you help us to realize that we all have to give an account of the things that we have done in our lives, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Oh, Father, tell them, keep us faithful, be with us now, be with the service. We ask these verses in the precious name of Jesus our Savior. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we will have our first lesson by the Mari Yua. That's a great grand name. That's from John 14, verse 1. Now the great Mari, you're going to start. Oh, oh, oh. 
and they lived. And the end is not perished. Neither have they any more approached forever in anything that is done under the sun. Heavenly Father, be the Holy Spirit of the Spirit in comfort. Be with the members of the Heavenly Father. May they find comfort in this comfort. May they look at the waters of the earth. Let me get in the water. And we shall meet again never to pass. Take this service and this waiting congregation in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For the living know that they shall die. But the dead know not anything. Since you and I, whose breath is still blowing through our nostrils, the blood is still running warm in our veins. Since we know that one day, sooner or later, we are going to die just like brothers. Then it behoves us then to make all the necessary preparation to meet Jesus. Because we all shall stand before the judgment bar of God to give an account of everything that we have done, whether it be good or whether it be not. So it behoves us then to make the necessary preparation. And nowadays, we are making preparation for our son of God to build bigger houses, buy more expensive cars, to go to university, to pursue higher degrees. But most of us are not making preparation for it. And we all will die one day, sooner or later, if Jesus died the alone. So since then, it's pronounced upon all of us because all of us have seen and keep coming short of the glory of God, then we must accept Jesus as our personal Savior and Lord. Because if we don't accept Jesus, then when our time comes to die, We don't die in James, our dying man will die in Jesus. What will our answer be? What can we say when Jesus calls us home? There is only a slim step between you and I and death. Yes. Since then, we don't know when death will come, or how it will come, or when they don't come in the morning at noon, or at the bottom of the sun. It behoves us then to live right 
So, Job here, Job chapter 40 and verse 1. The man that is born of a woman has but a few days and a full of children. That's why Moses in Psalms 90 and verse 12 declare, So teach us to number our days so that we may apply our hearts and knees. Our days and knees. We know for sure that God has given to all of us including brother and us, a probationary time. I did it. He has set boundaries for all of us. He has set for all of us a sunrise and a sunset. How we spend our lives between sunrise and sunset will tell what sort of destiny we are going to be. Be not deceived. God is a calculation, chapter 6, verse 2. Whatsoever seed a man sows, that shall be also reap. If we sow to the flesh, we shall of the flesh be corruptions. If we sow to the spirit, we shall reap life everlasting. Which one will you choose? Eternal life or eternal death? For Romans chapter 6, verse 23 declare that the wages of sin is that, but the gift of God is eternal life to Jesus Christ our Lord. We brought nothing into this world. And surely as God lives, we shall take nothing out of this earth. The Lord giveth, and he taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When you look at the solid, or the bread, or other basic food items, you will see I experimented him. Likewise, the clock is ticking away every time we tick our probationary And so it behoves us then to live for Jesus. Because if we don't know Jesus while we are alive, it will be too late when the bread leave our home. And so I say to all of us, God has given our brother 89 years plus. And we thank God that he has given him to us for over 89 years. We are not sure how long we are going to live. And since we are not certain how long we are going to live, it's better to commit our lives into the hands of the one who knows all about us and can cast both soul and body into them. Sing the Lord while he gave it comes. Call upon him while he's here. Let the wicked man forsake his face. And the ungodly man sought. Let him return unto the Lord. Oh. For he will have mercy. He will abundantly pardon. Come every soul. By sin of grace. He has mercy with the Lord, and he will surely give you rest by trusting in his soul. Trust Jesus. Seek him. Find him. Serve him. 
comfort. What a happy time. Family, it is going to be. What a glorious jubilee. All the seven building. What a meet. What a meet. What a meeting. What a glorious meet. Hallelujah. It is going to be. In the earth. God's richest blessings abide with the red of sun. All their relatives and friends may they find refuge in Jesus during this time of their grieving and bereavement. We want to thank the pastor for the timely message to us today. We will continue to pray that God will continue to bless him as he go forth with the word. At this point, we have been asked to, to offer condolence on behalf of the South East Seventh Adventist Church. I, 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 it's not me today to do such a job because I'm, I'm really closely connected to our brother, oh, to our brother.
he had got a bit tired uh, during the service, and so I would take him home. But I continued going there, and church sometimes followed me, or we would go together to the house and have prayer with him. When he got sick recently, um, um, we went there, and sometime after he went into a nursing situation, so we had lost him there, only to know that he had not been so we, I, I must say, not me, but I, I can talk for myself that I have been hard hit by the loss of a brother. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Barthi. So on behalf of our church family here, our pastor, our board of elders, and all the other officers, we share in your grief, in your loss at this time. Um, Brother Vic's wife, Sister Mar, held membership here. I remember the first Sabbath I saw Brother Vic at church, I was really excited. I was really hated seeing him sitting beside Sister Mar over here. And one of the things that touched me on that day we were in the process of putting in the windows of the church, those new windows, the fancy ones. And I made an appeal for the brethren to do something. Because we never had the money. Made an appeal for the brethren to do something. And during the service, for a big call one of the members of the church and took home that member. And the member returned smiling, Brother Julian. Brother Vic said, Brother Vic said, to do something. And the church has been, the, the building itself has, it has made a difference for us in the building. So, on behalf of our church, um, he has been a blessing. Um, my wife wanted really to be here, but she had to go to school today. She had to go to school today, or to go to work at school. Because uh, she would talk about the man, but she would not validate from him. Um, so he was a good person. We would have gone there. Um, she started to mention the past of what I've been how devastated it was for her, myself. Because most countries that I have been instrumental have been instrumental in. But I've been being placed in a nursing home in Monroe. And I was deliberate with a junior by the mom and the sisters. I was deliberate because I knew that it was going into a Christian environment. And the, the care that is provided there, I remember telling you guys that there's a pastor there who will provide spiritual homes and support for the, for the persons that are here. I was deliberate in wanting you to set in there because I know the support. But I think I have found to be, I mean, we have never sought permission to go there. And what I think is not today. But I think is always willing for us to come and to pray with him. Right? So I, I, I found that, you know, refreshing. I found that inspiring. So for me, he would have done something for me, you know. I learned along the way that he is of a particular faith, that he grew up in a particular denomination. And we don't tell people generally to be very denomination about the hearts. We generally point people to Jesus Christ. That is what we that is what we seek to do. Um I was not here with Junior. I, I saw Junior in Jerome Champagne and was talking and they said, but I've been passed. I said, what? Couldn't believe it. Couldn't really believe it because I, I figured that there was no way that environment. So, Junior and the others could go back to home and take care of the young because he would have been cared for. But it is what it is. Yeah. Um, I can say this much to you 
that he died at a good place. And I know the staff there would have done everything necessary and possible to guide him into finding rest and comfort in Jesus. And I want you guys to be inspired by that fact. That while we can't do anything for him now, he would have worked everything out in his dying moments with Jesus. He would have done that. He could do that for him. Yeah. Neither could he. So let us rest assured that there must be something that he has done to inspire the rest of us. So on behalf of our church family here, we just want to wish you all the best and that you guys will gather strength from his legacies, from the work that he has done, the positive things, the positive ways in which he has um, impacted not only your lives, but the lives of so many other persons. God bless you and may God continue to strengthen you as a family, as you deal with this house. God bless you. We will now go on to more tributes, but based on the situation that exists, and we have been changing around since we started, I am now going to be calling on Judy McIntosh, grandniece, to come. There's a song listed for her. Could she come now? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Oh 
very difficult. He and Harry returned to Jamaica, settled here in Southfield, where they had been their family home. They can resume life in Southern Tennessee as if he had a left here. He resumed farming, pitching money, boat rearing, poultry, cattle, and their property at Common Park and Park of Mandy. In addition, he took over the village, house, and shop and hard from his late father, becoming a continent businessman. He thought who we call Martin was loved and respected by God. He may be remembered for his kindness and generosity, which knew no home. Many, and I mean many, benefited. As his health declined, members of the family rallied around him and made his last days as comfortable as he could. Foremost among those persons was his nurse, Miss Berry. And Heather in peace. To his children, it must have been trying times for him to be traveling to and from far away in to come here to take care of the families. But to be, God will bless you all. Yes, amen. Rest in peace, my dear cousin. And we will be there. Three, Mark and 
imagine they were never in trouble as long as I was a part of them. For when we boys wanted to go anywhere, I would be appointed to ask. For there was more of a chance of getting a yes. Uncle Victor had a unique gift of bringing people together, creating a sense of family and belonging wherever he went. Years ago, I was driving to Brown one night, about midnight, in the rental car I had at the first of water hose. I left the car in junction at the stranger's house, and the owner graciously dropped us off at Uncle Vic's. In the morning, Uncle Vic took us back to the car. The owner came out and gave me the keys and said the car was fixed. He had called his mechanic, who fitted a used hose to get us going. When I asked how much it cost, the man said the mechanic told him, as his victory in his family, there is no charge. Yes. Yes. He taught us the importance of living with integrity, finding joy in little things, and always approaching life with a sense of humor and grace. His stories, filled with wisdom and wit, will remain with us, offering guidance and comfort as we move forward. As we say goodbye, let us remember Uncle Vic not with sorrow, but with the gratitude for the incredible impact he had on our lives. Let us honor his memory by embodying the qualities he held dear, kindness, resilience, and love for family. May his spirit continue to inspire, inspire us, and may we find solace in the many beautiful memories we share with, um, with, with him. On the way, you will be deeply missed, but never forgotten. Rest in peace, God.
taught us the value of family, the importance of standing together through thick and thin, and the power of unconditional love. His influence will forever be felt in the way we support one another, the respect we show, and the love we carry in our hearts. I have a sense of stories about that. Um, but though his physical presence is no longer with us, his spirit lives on um, in countless memories we hold here. We will remember the many ways he made us, each of us, feel special and loved. His legacy will continue to guide us, reminding us to cherish one another and to uphold the value of so gracefully in our body. His love for his family. And as we say our final goodbyes, let us care for the spirit of kindness and leadership. That time was one of the greatest times. May we honor him by living our lives the same, with the same integrity and the love he demonstrated. Thank you. 
went to the trap. He was more serious than that. He knew people all over the summer, and they lasted friendships in him and him. His life. Victor Curtis Reynolds was born on 18th of April, 1934. 35 in St. Elizabeth County to parents, Vincent and May Reynolds. He had, in childhood, 13 brothers and sisters. In 1954-55, he travelled from Jamaica to England on a dark boat with his cousin, Uncle Lou, arriving in Liverpool. From Liverpool, they made their way to London, a place Oh, they put down his boots. In those days, they shared rooms with relatives and friends from Jamaica until they became established. Whilst in England, he met Maria Rolt. In 1938, they had twin girls, Jennifer and Janet. Sadly, a few months after birth, Janet died. They were married in 1959. In no time at all, he moved out of his temporary accommodation and purchased his first property at number 36, the Rosa Street, which was in Fulham. In 1961, Eva was born. In 1965, Judy was born. In 1966, Mum and Dad decided to send the daughter, my eldest sister, was still in Jamaica. In 1967, Mark was born family complete. They worked together very well to build a solid foundation for their children. Our dad worked very hard to accomplish his goals in life. In the evenings, he studied at Monza Technical College to be an electrician in which he fully qualified. He worked for numerous companies, at the end, he found his own. He opened up a record shop when he sold, when he sold reggae and sold records. He also added the element of repairing televisions. He introduced many of his friends to the genre of music which he loved. Young and old would visit his shop. The only thing which I did not like was during our summer holidays, which was around six weeks in England, Judy and myself had to go and knock at his shop. Woe we tired that we gave back the long change. Mm. On Sundays, Daddy would sit in the front room and listen to his LPs, the likes of Red Charles, Ace Cannon, Jim Rings. Anymore. Also, on various Sundays, he would take us to visit his family and friends, or they would visit us. On occasions, he would also take us to the theatre. He was a very well respected and established man in the community. His dream was to return to Jamaica. He sold the other streets and removed into another of his properties. On Austin Road, still in Brooklyn. Not too long after, he sold Austin Road and we moved to Brudenell, which was in Tutor. When his house was complete in Jamaica, they relocated to Jamaica, bringing with them the two boys, Julia and Mark. Daddy only came back to England once, which was when Julia was getting married. Things had changed a lot in England, which he always remarked on. Life in Jamaica. When he arrived in 1981, he brought with him a taxi, minibus, a state car, jeep, and tractor. Mum at first worked at the shop in Brownsville. He had his fingers and a lot of ventures. After a while, Dad started farming. He helped numerous people in Jamaica, family and friends. He built a plaza behind the shop which is still in use today. 
After some men, he settled down and enjoyed his retirement. Since returning to Jamaica after his passing, many people, family and friends, have spoken about his generosity and kindness. The family would like to thank everyone who helped our dad from beginning to end. So many names to mention, but you know who you are. A big thank you because that's all the help of the very run came. Run came. Run came. They got my car. Heather. Romy. Lloyd. Glenn. And Soldy.
behalf of the entire membership of this church, I want to express our deepest condolences to the entire Renaissance family. We hope and pray that you may be here. Father Therese, that you too will always remember that your day is coming. And so again, I want to thank you for allowing us to accommodate this in our service. We hope and pray that the Lord will continue to be with you, especially those of us who are traveling back to be with you. We're going to be having the, the session. We're going to have the platform party on the first, followed by the casting, the family, the congregation, and we don't like that. By this time, we're going to be seeing. First hands of all. As I journey to the United States, as I go.
struggling the right road to choose. I don't Yeah. 
Yeah. 
so that they will walk proudly because of his achievement and because of what he has given to them. Bless the rest of the service now as we lay it remain to rest in this spot. May you mark it in Jesus' name. As we lay our dear brother to rest, Psalmist says that the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So as we lay him to rest, we say, dust to dust, ashes to ashes. We look forward to that great day. The trumpet shall sound. So dear brother Victor will rise again. So until then, those of us who are remaining here should live faithfully to the Lord. Because without any doubt, he is coming back again.